Hi guys, my name is Dr. Ogbeme of the Department of Systems Engineering, University of Lagos. We are going to be looking at more examples on isomatic set theory. So join me in this, right? Now, this is the first problem here. If you look at problem one here, so problem one here is uh, not tricky. I think it's straightforward. Now, if you look at it here, now, the intersection of A and B here is 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 is, den is denoted by you know by this, and is the set of the real numbers that satisfies both condition. Now, this can be denoted as. X belonging to all real numbers, okay? Then three, three less than X, X less than five. So in, in interval notation, the interval notation is, uh, the interval of notation is three and five. So take note here. So. This three here and this. It's very straightforward. I, I don't see it as being tricky. So this is the interval of uh, uh, notation because we are asked to determine, determine the transition of A and B and express the result in interval notation. Now let's look at problem two. Problem two, P intersection Q is a set of prime numbers between five and 15, okay? From this expression. Now, the intersection is, a, is finite, as there are finite numbers of prime numbers in this range. So I think this is very, very key. Now, our solution will now be P intersection Q, intersection Q, will now be, of course, now we have 5, okay, 7, 11, and 13. Because the intersection has to be finite, as there are finite number of uh, numbers within this range. So this is uh, our solution for uh, this uh, intersection problem. So you need to take note of uh, the no, you need to take note of uh, uh, the notation. Okay. Now, if you look at this now, now a intersection b. A intersection B consists of elements that are both that are common to both A and B. Okay. Now, since no integer can be both even and odd simultaneously, the intersection is an empty set. So this would be an empty set. An empty set because you know no integer can be both even and odd simultaneously. So this is a pure empty set uh, problem. Now let's look at, let's quickly look at, let's quickly look at problem four. Now, if you look at MN includes M intersection, M intersection, uh, Sorry, please. N intersection N includes number that are both multiple of three and multiple of uh, they are both multiple of three and five into fifteen, which is supposed to three times five. Okay, so N M intersection N is going to be 15. So the intersection is not empty. It contains a single element of 15. So this, this is not empty, unlike uh, our previous uh, problem, okay? Now, let's see if we can take more example. Now, if you look at this, this is an example of a joint uh, set. Now, the intersection of uh, A and B a and B consist of elements that are common to both, okay? 
Now, for any real number x, it can be both less than zero, it can be both less than zero or greater than zero simultaneously. Is that okay? So what that means now is that A intersection B is empty. And set A and B are disjoint. Yeah, this could be a bit tricky because for any real number x, for any real number x, it cannot, it cannot be both less than zero and greater than zero simultaneously. So you can see, so that will be a bit tricky, but I think it's very straightforward. Now, let's look at problem six. Let's look at problem six quickly. So in problem six, we have to show that set P and Q are disjoint by finding their intersection, okay? Now, the intersection of P and Q is denoted by the Q, you know, consists of elements that are both common to both sides. Now, when you look at since prime, since prime, greater than 10 cannot be a perfect square. Cannot be a perfect square. Okay. P intersection Q is going to be an empty set. So what that means now is that what that means now is that uh, P and Q, what that means, therefore, therefore, P, P and Q are disjoint sets. Okay? Now, let's see if we can take <clears throat> one more example. Now, let's look at this example now. We are supposed to determine the intersection of the interval set, the interval of set A and B, and express the result in interval notation. And we are also expected to prove if the intersection is empty. Now, if we look at uh, A intersection B here, consists of elements that are both common to A and B. Now, A intersection B minus three, minus two, eh? because of this, this limit. Eh? So that is a trick, okay? Now, because it because it includes values that are that are in both A and B. Now to prove that the intersection is not empty, all you need to do is that you need to consider the value in the interval. Now let's look at the value in the interval now. If you look at here, minus three, two, such as minus 2.5, eh? 
since minus 2.5 is in both in both A and B, A intersection B is non empty because minus 2.5 still fall within uh, uh, this ridge. So, okay, so I think uh, that is all I'll be able to take. You know, uh, as the concluding uh, part of our revision series for our axiomatic set theory. So, uh, our next revision class, we're going to be looking at uh, the Boolean algebra. So, I'll come up with uh, short videos as part of our revision while we prepare for the exam. Is that okay? So, you can uh, subscribe so you can get notification when I drop other videos. Thank you very much. And, uh, do have uh, a splendid day. Thank you so much for your time.